Tape Projection. It's Friday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Alabama Slam Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Hanna. What's going on, guys? It's Patrick Akers. And uh, we have got a shit ton of stuff to cover this week. We'll get into a little bit of WWE. We'll recap uh, AEW Dynamite from last night, and then we're also going to give our predictions on full gear coming up this weekend. Uh, so, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Uh, let's touch a little bit on SmackDown from Friday night. The uh, Usos and the New Day. Just yeah. a banger of a match. Good shit. The Usos are now the longest reigning tag team champions of all time in the WWE. How how long have they had it now? Gosh, I don't even... It's over 400-something days, I think, at this point. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you talk about the Usos and the New Day. These are two teams who have defined tag team wrestling in their generation. Uh, they've... They've been swirling around each other for the entire time. They've both been in WWE. Uh, and so to see them go out there and, and put on the match they did, this was a fantastic match. Yeah. SmackDown is still, I think, the best wrestling show going. Uh, it has a lot of forward momentum. They do all the little things right. It has just enough good wrestling, g- good storytelling. Uh, it still got the belt for me for the best wrestling show. Um, and this is, you know, things like Usos in the New Day or – a big part of that why so yeah they had the crowd the crowd was hot for this match so yeah overall I, very good yeah the new day were one of the, the first first tag teams that i got interested in when i started w- watching wrestling about four five, four years ago i guess um I, I love their energy i love everything about it so it was it was fun to watch this match do they ever split them up man i hope not because but they i mean they kind of did when they t- they put didn't they put Biggie on Raw like a year or two ago. Yeah, there was a draft where they got split up. Yeah. But I'm talking about do they split up, split up, split, turn on each other? Because they've basically been doing not, the same yeah. thing now for a while. Yeah, but come on, man. Yeah, but you, I don't know. You have to advance that story somehow. Uh, and I mean, there, but there is also another story to be told. Xavier Woods is the only one of that trio to never hold the WWE championship. Maybe they do that at some point down the line. Uh, that would be a, a nice little come full circle moment for that team. Uh, but, I mean, these are two Hall of Fame teams. Um, you know, where I don't know where you put them on the list of greatest tag teams ever. Because, you know, the WWE commentary, oh, the Usos are the greatest tag team ever. Uh, okay, well, I mean, you had the Steiner Brothers and the Road Warriors and the Hart Foundation and the British Bulldog. Like, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of really, really good tag teams. Yeah. Uh, but no doubt the Usos and the New Day are, are the top two of their generation. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else do you want to cover from, from, from that night? We have uh, the War Games match. is starting to shape up for Survivor Series. I'm kind of quietly anticipating a very, very good Survivor Series pay-per-view coming up in the next couple of weeks from WWE. And, you know, War Games is going to be a big part of that, obviously. Uh, when it was announced that there was going to be two War Games matches on a uh, main roster pay-per-view that hadn't been done before, uh, a lot of fans got excited. And then knowing that, oh, it's going to be the Bloodline is going to be involved in one of them, who were the hottest act in the company. Uh, you know, there was speculation, who who are they going to face? Um, we got our answer Friday night. Um, Brawling Brutes come out. Sheamus comes back. Obviously, for war games, you need five people. Sammy wasn't there Friday. Uh, looks like he might have had a, a death in his family from the his social media account. So hopefully, um, he'll be back. Um, but yeah, Drew McIntyre came out, and so we have the Bloodline already has five members, right? So right now on the other side, we have Butch and Ridge and Sheamus and McIntyre, and I'm going to assume the number five for their team is going to be Kevin Owens. Um, yeah, I was reading just before we started recording that Kevin Owens is apparently not moving around very well. Yeah, I think he got hurt at a house show is what they said. Yeah. Uh, so Survivor Series, uh, two weeks away, I think, Yeah. after Thanksgiving. So maybe that's enough time to kind of get healed up a little bit. Um, if not, that's going to be a major blow because you have the built-in history between Kevin and Sammy. Um and I think what they're gearing up to do is if they do, if Sammy versus Roman is going to be the main event at WrestleMania, 
then you kind of want these characters like a Drew McIntyre, like a Sheamus, like a Kevin Owens in Sammy's corner, so to speak, who have tried to topple the the powerhouse that is Roman Reigns and have failed to do it, kind of talking Sammy up, gearing up to to the main event of WrestleMania, bill, billing him as like this underdog. Uh, and then obviously the history between Kevin and Sammy too would be yeah uh, a nice moment. So yeah, I'm you know, and on the other side, uh, going into Raw now, the other War Games match is going to be Bianca Belair and her team versus Bailey and her team. Uh, and it got announced that Mia Yim is going to be on Bianca's team, and Rhea Ripley is now going to be on Damage Control's team. Hmm. Uh, so that should be another good. War Games match. Um, yeah, I think there's I there's a lot well. of money in a Bianca Belair versus Rhea Ripley program. I mean, it, they it, they had a brief little standoff moment, um, and that's when you know that they're that people are stars, right? When they just come into contact with each other, they don't even have to say anything. They just give each other a look, and you go, "Oh yeah, I would like to see that. <laughs> that would be awesome." Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, Seth Rollins is doing his thing on Monday Night Raw. He had a great match with Finn Balor. And the Austin Theory Rehabilitation Project has begun. <laughs> uh, what are they doing with him now? I missed, I missed Raw completely. So, you know, he's been doing, you know, he cashed in, failed on the U.S. title. Uh, so he came out and gave a pretty impassioned promo Monday night. Uh, and then, of course, like with anything in WWE in the past decade, whenever you have to like use somebody to put somebody else over, here comes Dolph Ziggler, who has just been that he's been that spot for a decade now. Uh, and Austin Theory just beat the shit out of Dolph Ziggler in a match. And Theory's got the full beard going on now, and he was angry and vicious. And you're like, okay, this is what we kind of need to see from because this dude has boatloads of damn potential. I mean, just in his look. Uh, and his athletic ability, his work rate in the ring. He is a star in the making, but you kind of have to position him in a way that the audience takes him seriously now because he's been a buffoon yeah. for, you know, six to eight months. So so real quick before we get into Dynamite, I, I want to I ask you, are we supposed to be excited about Bray Wyatt versus L.A. Knight? I don't know if we're supposed to be excited. I think... That's a good question because it feels like the Bray stuff has started. We we asked this question a couple weeks ago. When is it going to kind of start to get stale? I think we hit that point where we had so much momentum coming out of the yeah. game. His return, it was all over everywhere. And then to just have him be backstage LA night, it is kind of I mean, I like the I like the slow unraveling, you know, where he was cutting the promo a couple weeks ago backstage and gets hot and heated with the, you know, production assistant. Right. You know, and then, like, he's just unraveling slowly, but I just, I'm like, okay, well, first match is going to be L.A. Knight. Right, and it, they're kind of in a pickle because, say, for instance, if you wanted him to go right up against Roman Reigns. I mean, that's not the move either, okay. but damn. Yeah, because he's got nowhere to go from there. But, like, starting with L.A. Knight. But like we said, you know, this is it's, it's pro wrestling. It's not Broadway. So, at some point, he's got to get physical with somebody. Yeah. Um, you know, this is probably also not the best thing for L.A. Knight either because they're just trying to get him going. Uh, and he has some potential as kind of a smart-ass kind of heel. He reminds me a lot of, like, Mr. Kennedy uh, from back in the day. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um I don't think they've lost all the steam and momentum with Bray Wyatt, but if this if he is going to be part of a, a faction leader, it's time we start getting those those people need to start debuting. If his brother's going to come, his brother's probably should have come a couple weeks ago. Yeah, like it's time to get this thing yeah. really rolling and humming along. Yeah. Well, if you do, you have anything else on those before we get into dynamite? I don't think so. You know, as hard as it's, it seems like just yesterday, but once we get past Survivor Series, we're going to be straight on the road to WrestleMania. Yeah. It'll be Royal Rumble, and uh, there we go. Yeah, seems quick, but. Yeah. Uh, so last night on Dynamite, uh, it started off with uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara versus Brian Danielson and Claudio. And, um, you know, again, it's like, I feel like we got this match kind of last week, and then. 
real similar thing. It was a good match. Don't get me wrong. There were, there were a couple of times where I just went, oh, shit, real loud in my yeah. living room. Um, I thought Claudio tossed Sammy Guevara in the middle of the ring, tossed him just straight up in the fucking air about <laughs> 10 feet. That yeah. was ridiculous. Uh, you know, a couple great moments, but, uh, you know, you and I were talking right before we started recording. Like, this, this was not a real great build to to full gear so it definitely is the worst build to a pay-per-view since we've been doing this podcast i think without question uh i would have to go back and kind of think about and look is it the worst pay-per-view build they've had since AEW has been a company it's definitely probably up there this show feels like it has no momentum behind it it has no energy and electricity which I think is what drew us to the product in the first place. Yeah. It's like, even if the stories didn't make sense, there was like a vibe uh, that was underneath the whole thing where we were just kind of drawn to it. All that, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's fatigue. I don't know if it's um, the fact that they've had injuries pile up and they've had this whole CM Punk debacle and the elite stuff that's kind of hung over them. There's no... um, that, that, That vibe, that energy... That momentum has all been sucked out of this product. Do you think that the elite being away from their EVP roles for for so long had a factor? Like, do you think they were that much involved in the in the planning and and build up? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I wish we could get more answers on stuff like that. Behind something has happened. I mean, we know that they've been there behind the scenes they've the last there, two yeah. weeks, but I mean, yeah. How involved could they have been, you know? Yeah, pitching stories. Because, like, it's the stories that... The wrestling is still top-notch. Sure. I mean, we'll talk about uh, the six-man tag that had Death Triangle and AR Fox and the top flight. Great stuff. Fantastic. It's just... They have matches like that, and then they don't really... Then they turn around, and the way that they introduce the Elite is going to be at full gear is through like a shitty after effects transition yeah. and you're just like okay well <laughs> there's something else that we could be doing here that makes this more interesting instead of just doing that yeah you know is it that tony khan is stretched thin creatively you know he seems to be the sole creative force in that company you know at this point they've been going for three years three and a half years you know uh you can't artistically like Tony Khan is a businessman, right? And so in business, you can like just grind away at something because there's a clear objective that you're getting to, right? We have to build this rocket. So we know what we're going to do. We're going to do it every single day. Even if we get no sleep, we know what we're supposed to do. You can't really operate that way creatively because there is no definitive end goal you're trying to reach to. It's all fiction. So you're just making it up on the spot. Yeah. And you can only exhaust yourself and run yourself so thin right like it's like a, it's like a band if a band's yeah. touring like it's hard for them to record a new album while they're also touring 300 cities a year so, you know what i mean so did they get stripped of their evp roles i don't i don't remember i remember there was talk of it that they should be but i don't think they, they i got, don't know if they ever if we ever got confirmation that they did or not so it'll be interesting to see the build up to the next pay-per-view after this one and see what yeah you know like. you know maybe that is maybe you chalk this up to hey that dickhead CM Punk ruined the vibe and the camaraderie in the locker room for everybody. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. We're just going to write this off, yeah. But I don't know. Like, It's a lot of lackluster shows we've had here. And like we said, they only get four of these pay-per-views a year. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what the buy rate for this pay-per-view is. Yeah. Um, is it that the idea that MJF might walk away with t- the title enough to get you know, fans to buy the pay-per-view or are a lot of people going to be like, they have watched these past three weeks and just go, ah, I'm all right. I'll watch it on Twitter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, that's, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I feel like the, the mat, well, we'll get to that later. I, it was a good start to show solid match, but nothing super exciting. You know, with with the outcome of this one, it was nice to see Claudio get the pin and submission on Jericho, which means Jericho's probably going to win. Yeah, come Saturday, of course. 
So, um, so next up, Anthony Bowens and uh, Swerve Strickland, and we got the new music video from the acclaimed. Uh, once again, Daddy Ass comes out, tries to get Swerve before the match starts, and then he and Max Caster got ejected. Ejected. Yeah, I thought the music video was fun. It was funny. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was fun. I don't think if it's it's as good as the one they did when they were heels going up against Darby and Sting, where it was two grown men going through a goth face. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that one was pretty good. Uh, the acclaimed are still just over as shit. Yeah. Like this crowd was dead for the most part of the night. They really just popped for the entrances, and that was it. But they really popped for that acclaimed entrance, as arenas all over the country have done now. The acclaimed are still. One of the hottest acts in wrestling. Um, and, you know, this match was, was good. It, it had Swerve Strickland, his more vicious side. He has fully embraced his heel role. Just so much swagger. And I've never seen... He has a very unique way of moving in the ring. And I'm talking about just, like, the way he gets into positions that I don't know if I've seen anybody else move like that before. It's like this herky jerky. Well, he's real lanky, and that probably yeah. Has it's like to do a with it. it's like a it's like a Ja Morant or like a James Harden in basketball, where it's just like they have this way of moving where nobody can stay in front of them, and Swerve just has this way of like hitting the ropes and like ducking behind guys, and I don't know. It's it's unique and it's interesting to me. Um, at some point, I hope that he ascends into an even even higher status in the card. Because I think he can live up there in that upper echelon of being one of the top five or six guys in the company, particularly with all the influences and the, all the connection he has with the the hip hop world. Um, uh, yeah. So it, so it'll we'll see how he kind of uh, comes out of this swerve in our glory tag team phase. Because I would predict, and we'll get to it. I think full gear is going to be the end of swerve in our glory. Yeah. Um, and so then you move both of those guys off into singles runs and. Yeah, because they they've had three. This will be the third match with the acclaimed. It's yeah. like, what do you really do with them after this? Right, and you have FTR waiting in the wings. Uh, you have some other tag teams that you probably want to invest uh, a little bit more uh, stock into. And I think both Keith Lee and Swerve are more beneficial as singles competitors than yeah. they are as a tag team. Yeah, they were a great tag team, great sure. matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think they're better as singles single stars. Yeah, and so next we had Samoa Joe in the ring. Uh, he cut a pretty fire promo. So Joe was worked up last night. This is what Joe does. Like, you know, you you watch that promo for Samoa Joe Wednesday night, and you go, "Why is this dude not on TV every week?" Yeah, like it, it had. If anything had a had a, a an energy to it, and a, a that kind of like oh, shit, I need to be watching this, like something interesting has happened. It was his his promo. Yeah. Yeah, so they set up him versus uh, Powerhouse Hobbs versus Wardlow um, at the pay-per-view, which you, you saw coming last week. For some reason, that one flew over my head. Yeah. I didn't see that one coming. Um, but, yeah, they, <laughs> they had uh, everybody trying to keep them broken apart. And then the Dark Order were out there around Wardlow, and then they were just like, "No, nah, Cuz, man, do what you do what you want." It was great. That was a great moment. Again, like that's what they need to do more of. I think, like going back to SmackDown, that's what SmackDown does so well, and WWE in general does so well. Even on Monday Night Raw, uh, there they had a little moment. Chad Gable and Otis are being interviewed by Kathy Kelly, and then around the corner comes Seth Rollins, and he's singing a song, and then him and Chad and Otis start singing the song together, like. When you have these moments where these characters are interacting with each other outside of their main programs, it helps suck you into this world uh, way a lot better, and that helps the storytelling-wise purpose. So, yeah, like, Dark Order are good guys. They like Wardlow. Like, why would they not just be like, eh, it's, right. it's funny that Dark Order are, like, faces. To me. You know, like... Yeah, you know, they have... You want to talk about... Uh, an act that has really done a full like 180 because remember they were supposed to be spooky scary almost cultish and then of course like you know obviously you had the unfortunate passing of Brody Lee which changed everything but they I never even bought them even when they had Brody Lee I never bought them as being uh you know any kind of 
powerful force. It was a lot more convincing when you had him out there beating the living shit out of Cody Rhodes. Yeah, but even even then, John Silver and Alex Reynolds were still just like goofball comedy yeah. acts, and now they've leaned fully into it. Uh, and it's you know it's worked for them. I think um, they still need to get ten I th- out of that mask because his mask just looks. I don't. I don't know. It's not. He's not an ugly dude. We know what he looks like. He's on all these wrestlers' vlogs. Well, he's teased it a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, just take him off of it. Yeah. Anyway. So next up was uh, Britt, Britt Baker promo, and Britt. Britt has come a long way for me, man. You know, I shit on Britt a whole lot on this podcast, but like, I mean, it was, and she even kind of referenced it. She referenced like her shitty promos in the beginning. Yeah, last night, and but she just gets better and better with her promos. I feel like, and it you know, she's been the face of the women's division for a while, and she kind of had to. She had. I mean, she had to get better. Like, yeah, I think if you were handing out a most improved award for the first time that first AEW Dynamite to now, she's the runaway winner. There's been nobody that has grown over the course of these three years as much as what Britt, ba- Britt Baker has. Yeah, I mean, unless you, you know, count the acclaimed, and we've talked about their rise going from, you know, dark matches yeah, to putting themselves over. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's got to be yeah. Britt Baker for them. But somehow. the acclaimed have had, there's other people that have carried that division, right? FTR, the Young sure, Bucks. Sure, yeah. It's been Britt and really nobody else up until very recently. Where you had like yeah. Jamie Hayter come on and Tony Storm has come on, it's kind of it was up to Britt to kind of carry it. And Britt was injured and was doing the role model thing. Yeah. She's rolling out. She was doing the conspiracy theory stuff. Like she was her her character was evolving and changing even when she couldn't wrestle. Um, and so yeah, I think that her promo last night was exactly what it needed to be, which is, uh, you know, you said all this shit about me last week. It's not true. Like. I the I think she had a line where it's like the only we've both been given the same thing and the only thing is an opportunity, um, and so I'm excited. It makes me want to see this match. I think these two women are going to be motivated to kind of try to steal the show. Um, obviously, Soraya her first match back, and I don't even know how many years. Um, yeah, it's been a while. So we will, uh, you know, that's a dark horse candidate for maybe a, a, a show stealer. Now, obviously. These two women have never wrestled before. The chemistry can always be off. We've seen that happen before. We're like, you know, it's 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 a bad match, but it's really neither wrestler's fault. It's just kind of like uh, we yeah. just didn't click for whatever reason. So, um, yeah, and then Soraya's promo after that later on the show was short and sweet, too. That's all she needed to say. Like, I'm tired of talking. Let's wrestle. I'll see you Saturday. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Next up was probably the match of the night. Uh, AR Fox and... Top Flight versus Dark Triangle, Death, Death Triangle. Death Triangle. <laughs> I can't fucking write, and I'm I'm looking at this from a distance without my glasses, and I'm like, I said that I said Dark Triangle. I was like, what the fuck is a Dark Triangle? Yeah. Death Triangle. Um, I it was it was nice to see Darius Martin back. He looks to be in good form. Yeah, had some really good spots last night. I don't know shit about Ar Fox, but that dude looked really good so last AR night. and they, they kind of talked about it a little bit last night AR Vox has been a guy who has been um, a mainstay on the American independent scene for I don't even well over a decade at this point um, High Flyer has trained a lot of guys who have been in AEW a lot of guys in AEW have taken influence from AR Vox taken some of his moves so it was really cool last night to see a guy like him who has just put in the work wrestling in you know vfw halls and high school rec centers all across the country to then get that moment on a big stage and to then get the tag he's never been on AEW dynamite before and he comes in and the crowd starts chanting his name like we got to realize sometimes these are people too behind these characters and so what an awesome fucking moment that probably is for that dude yeah who's just like i you know i don't even know if these people are gonna know who i am and i get tagged in and i'm standing in the middle of a ring and you know there's a thousand you know thousands of fans who were screaming my name you yeah know? that's that's a cool cool moment i mean he and looks, he had some spots i like the springboard yeah. spanish fly like that inventiveness that you've seen like his influence you see that in darius martin you see that in dante martin like uh 
So so that's cool. And I, I I'm really glad that AEW does stuff like that. Where they can bring in guys, you know, even crazy ass like Nick Gage. <laughs> right? They bring in Nick Gage <laughs> yeah. and he wrestles Chris Jericho. Yeah. Um they bring in um Vance Warner. Mance Warner, they bring in Juventud Guerrero, like to face so, just little things like that that are for wrestling fans, you just go, oh, that's a that's a cool moment for these guys to have, and it's cool for me to see. Great Muta, that was a, another thing. A Grand Slam, you know, he comes in, he blows the miss at Buddy Matthews. Like, yeah, those are cool little moments, and and I'm glad AEW has taken up that mantle of uh, really saying like, hey, these are some guys that you should know about as a fan, and and then you're you're left to go then do your own research, right? Yeah. And when Ring of Honor Library comes up on a streaming service then they can pitch you back on social media hey if you like ar vox here's ar vox's five best ring of honor matches you know what i mean yeah. so uh it was good all around and yeah this was a this match has just become like your classic aew trios match you're gonna get your spots in it's gonna move it's gonna be fast paced uh and you're gonna see wrestling that you don't see on any other program uh in america during the week so uh, it was great all around yeah, we touched on this earlier, um, and then we we, we kind of moved pivoted away because we we didn't want to get there yet. But I, I really like how they after the match they're like, let's let's quit fucking around. We're going to talk about the elite, right? Because we all knew it was coming. Yeah, we just didn't know how. We we I I thought they would be on TV last night, so we're just expecting the elite music to hit. And Pac is like, okay, well, look, you know, here's here's the deal. Y'all are coming back. We know it. And I was like, okay, well, this is cool. This is different. But then they just show a fucking graphic. In retrospect, they should their, their music should have hit. I know you want that moment. But again, like, you're asking customers to pay $50 for this pay-per-view. It's different from WWE where a lot of people, we already have Peacock. Right. So it's basically free. Like, you're asking people to get their, their wallets out, to, to get their debit card out. It needed that moment of the, of the Elite's music hitting and then walking down to the ring. They don't even have to say anything. They walk down to the ring. You get the six men squaring off, and then you just have Pac deliver his line, which his line last night was fucking amazing go-home line. You think you're coming for us, but we've been waiting for you. He says that to Kenny Omega's face. He drops the mic, and they walk off. Yeah. And then you just have that moment. Then you go to commercial break, and you can redo it from there. Yeah, just showing them on a graphic is, out of all the ways to do something, that's the worst <laughs> worst way to do it. Always. Yeah, it was a really good setup and then terrible execution. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. So uh, let me put on my glasses just so I don't fuck that. The next one up, <laughs> uh, Bandito versus Ethan Page. Uh, Bandito was a pretty great signing. It was cool to see them giving him some. They've work. got something in that guy. Yeah. If they if they do it right, I, there's a star with that guy. His gear last night looked amazing. You could you can just envision them selling his mask on AEWshop.com and having a bunch of little kids buy it and dress it up like those are those those are big things to part of a wrestler's um, get up too is like. Can people see themselves, especially little kids, dressing up like this guy? Uh, and I think they, you know, like a Rey Mysterio with his mask. Uh, kids fucking love <laughs> Lucha mask. Uh, and then he can clearly go in the ring. I mean, this match had a couple spots in it, particularly the uh, Avalanche Ego's Edge that he turned into the Hurricane Rana that oh, he then turned into great. the Press Slam. Yeah, Jesus. Like, yeah, so they, they have something in him. And then, of course, Ethan Page gets the win. Clearly, it looks like yeah. he's going to be next in line yeah. to go up against what we both assume will probably be MJF. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Ethan Page is a guy that we've been talked about. We've talked about, hey, he needs something. He's ready. Um, and so here it looks like we're get, he's going to get his opportunity here, which is nice to see. Yeah, and he's gone full heel. Like, crowd crowd hates him. Yeah. yeah like, and, and, I mean, he's doing a good job of it. You know, I mean, that's – he he uh, he has he just leaned into it. I feel like more recently, and you know, he has Stokely Hathaway by yeah. his side, who we've yet to really see just go scorched earth on the microphone like we know that he can. 
Uh, so they have that card left to play too. Yeah, and if you don't follow Stokely on Twitter, you got to follow Stokely on Twitter. Him before and, Twitter him and Nyla Rose. Down. Yeah, him and Nyla Rose are the top two wrestling accounts to yeah. follow. Yeah. Undefeated, for sure. So, quickly, let's touch on Anna Jay and Tony Storm. Um, you know, nobody saw, nobody thought Anna Jay was going to win. And there no. wasn't much to this match other than the, you know, let's get Jamie out here to face off at the end. Yeah. A um, couple of good spots here, but... The crowd was silent. Yeah. Like, you could... Li- the crowd was so silent, you could hear the sound of the wrestlers hitting the ropes. Yeah. And the, the like, pushback. That's how quiet it was. Yeah, and it was kind of weird to have this was the last match before the promos. Like, maybe put Death Triangle in this spot. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah, because it, it really, and this was a, it was a fine match. I mean, it is, Tony Storm has had these matches. Uh, Tony looks more of a star than what she did when she first got the title, but yeah, they were just put in a terrible position here. Yeah, I think not in, their fault. I think in hindsight, you put that match maybe second or third on the card, and you yeah. move Death Triangle to the end yeah. to let them really tear the house down before you go into these promos. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. So lastly, uh, Moxley and MJF promos. So Moxley was just off last night. Um, he and, looks like a man that needs a vacation. Yeah, he fumbled a couple of things, you know, and it was like, blah, 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 you know, he just did. He blatantly just went, blah, 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 and yeah. it was like, uh, I forgot what he was tasting something about. Call it a Brian Pillman spot or something. Yeah, and then. Um, He's like, is this is a pay per view Saturday or Sunday? I'm like, yeah, Come while on, MJF's in the ring, yeah, yeah. he, yeah, he, he, uh, he, he needs a break. Yeah, it's it's time. Yeah, it, it is time, and it, this is unfortunate because again, this was the go home show for the pay per view. Yeah, and like, if you were just what, if you didn't know anything about anything, you hadn't been watching, and you just watched this segment, and you asked somebody like, oh, do you want to see these two guys wrestle? And you're gonna pay fifty dollars to watch it. A lot of fans would just be like. No, I don't. I don't. There's no. There was nothing there. No, I mean MJF. On the other hand, you know he he kind of redeemed the whole segment, but um, it just felt a little off. Yeah, I mean MJF was great, but it just it wasn't a great send off. No, no, not at all. This was by far Moxley's worst segment he's had since he's been in AEW, and particularly since he's been champion. Yeah, uh, you know he let Regal hold the belt last night. Like I just think it's, I just think he's a dude that's like I'm burnt out, man. I'm ready. To, he's I need, tired, man. I need some time to clear my head. Yeah, um, and I ain't mad at it. I mean, you when you go that when you go that hard for that long, you gotta get a little little break at some point. Yeah, you know, I really would have liked to have he- heard from William Regal because we heard from Moxley last week. Yeah, I would have liked to have had Regal been the one that had been doing the promo yeah they didn't get any real resolution or i didn't get any real satisfaction like it was really great when it was mjf versus regal there for like a well, week or two well that's been the highlight of this build yeah like if you go back like and you ask like from these past four weeks what's been the best segment on aew it's by far been uh mjf and, and regal yeah and we haven't got any other kind of follow-up face-off. So I would have really liked last night if it just been like Moxley. Even if he's just like, I'm the, I don't have anything else to say. Regal, you got anything? Like, I'm the yeah. champion. Here, give him the microphone. Yeah, and let Regal, Regal five minutes. let Regal give him five minutes at, before MJF comes out. Yeah. Um, before, before we get into the, the full gear predictions, um, I want to talk about how excited I am for Rampage Friday night, and that's mainly for one reason, and that is Takeshita is going to be Our back. Our boy's coming back, yeah. yeah. I'm hyped as shit. Yeah. I don't know how long we'll get him for. but It could just be this match. Yeah. But... Um, It'd be weird to come back to the States for one match. Well, you know, it's going to be a live Rampage 2, which is going to be even better, because uh, the live... Rampages just have there's a certain element to them that the taped ones just don't have. Right, and we get Ricky Starks versus yeah, Lance and Lance. not only do we get Takeshita, but he's going up. Uh, he's tagging with uh, uh, 
now I forget the Japanese guys, Akiyama, who has been a a, a hero of Ada Kingston's. So you get Ada Kingston and Ortiz on the other side. This that match is gonna go hard. It's gonna be physical. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be hopefully maybe if there's some fans on the fence about buying the pay per view Saturday, they watch that match and it and they go, okay, I'm convinced now. Because this pay per view for as lackluster as the build could be. We know how there's, AEW works. This thing could it could burn the house down. I mean, there's some <laughs> all of it, you know. There's some great matches slated. Yeah, great potential. The potential to be great. Sure. Yeah. Well, we'll, you know, if they capitalize, that'll be a thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Our boy Takesh is coming back. Yeah. Hype. I'm hype. Um, having said that, you've got the rundown for um, Full Gear over there. Let's 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 roll. Uh, yeah. So let's do. It. So I just put, I don't even who knows this what the order is going to be, but this is just what the website said. So first off, we have um, Darby Allen and Sting versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I thought the Darby and Sting vignette Wednesday night was also really well done. Yeah, it was cool. Darby has he knows who his character is. And I would imagine he's the one calling the shots on a lot of that stuff. And he, I don't know, it's cool. Like, the body bag going, and I don't know. He, there's a there's a mystique around this guy that I really enjoy. His vignettes are usually pretty cool. So, you, yeah. yeah, it makes you wonder, like, how much they let him kind of just be like, hey, I got a camera And then proof. I just, I love the fact that Sting is driving in this full, you know. Full uh, Sting gear. Full Sting gear <laughs> with the makeup and everything. Yeah. Uh, the black and white, it's all great. Um this has to be Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, though, right? Probably, sadly. Because, I mean, we... I don't know. AEW has done this before, where people have debuted, and they just beat them <laughs> right out the gate. How how many matches do you... Do you put Jeff Jarrett in for, though, after this? Like, there... Because there's not a lot of people that age wrestling actively, like, Right. You know, Sting has active storylines. Yeah. They don't... I mean, they've got a lot of people in the company, but most of them now are, are coaching or working dark or... But here's the thing, though. If, you know, jumping ahead, if we both think MJF is going to win the title Saturday and MJF is going to be a babyface, which he should be, there are not a lot of heel challengers he can go up against because he has been the biggest heel in that company. True. So they're building up Ethan Page... Outside of Ethan Page, who's left? There's literally nobody <laughs> that is a heel. Yeah. So you kind of have to, if you have Jeff Jarrett here and Jay Lethal, the promos between Jeff Jarrett and MJF would be really entertaining stuff. Yeah. And you could have Jay Lethal work his way up the ranks to challenge MJF here in the next couple couple months. Like I, I don't know. We gotta, we gotta start building some of these guys. Cause, yeah. You know, Punk ain't coming back. The Elite are doing their own thing. When they'll have the trios title, it's you know, Moxley will be gone. Hangman, you, you don't want to do Hangman and MJF. They're both baby faces. Remind me when we get done with this. I've got a question about Hangman. I want to circle back to. Okay. But yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, hmm. I don't know, man. We'll see. I think you're right. I mean, I think the the winners will be Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I just think it, you bring Jeff Jarrett in to be a manager for Lethal, um, and then you can work. Jay Lethal has the talent to work up the card because we have to start throwing some of these guys up to MJF so he can beat. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my prediction. Because Darby and Sting, they can get their heat back at any point, right? I yeah. mean, Darby can have a crazy coffin match, and, <laughs> and the whole crowd's right behind him again. True, so. true, true. Um, and then next up, we have uh, Soraya versus Britt. I mean, it's got to be Soraya, right? Yeah. For what we talked about, you don't bring somebody back and just have them get beat their first time. Yeah, I'm interested to see how much they let her get into, you know, and how cautious they are with her. You know, there was a oh, thing. There's a headline that came out yesterday. That said that Tony Khan said that he was going to sign sign her, whether she could wrestle or not. Which I think is smart. You know, even if she couldn't wrestle, there are things that she could have done. Uh, been a manager for somebody, uh, been on commentary or or something like that. You could have done something with her. Uh, but yeah, she is more valuable that she can wrestle. Yeah. Uh, but I think it has to be. Her. I mean, there might be a lot of people that did buy it just for this. Could be. I mean, she is 
you know, we talked about she was the biggest women's star that has come into that AEW locker room. Um, you know, they had Ruby Soho, but she was never at the level of what uh, Soraya was at all. So, yeah, I think it's her now. It's going to be interesting to see if they do this in a way where it looks like the feud continues or if this is just a one-off. Uh, and that'll probably have something to do with the Jamie Hayter and uh, Tony Storm match we have coming up. Uh, next up, we have Jack Perry, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, versus Luchasaurus in a steel cage. Uh, do you think they keep squashing Jack? I don't think they keep squashing him, but I think Luchasaurus might get the win here. Um, again, Christian Cage's elbow will be healthy at some point, and we need to build up heels to run up at MJF. Christian Cage is another potential guy with Luchasaurus in this corner, so um, yeah, we'll we'll see there. What are your what's your prediction? I figure they they'll they'll beat Jack. They'll. I feel like it'll be more satisfying to see him get a win later than a win now, right? Yeah, a win now would be satisfying, but I feel like. You got to tear him down a little more, maybe. Now, he's going to do something crazy. He's going to jump off this cage. Yeah. I mean, that's a given, right? He's yeah. going to... If there's one big cage spot or one big spot to have, it's going to be yeah. Jack Perry jumping off this cage. So, that'll be cool to I see. I mean, personally, would I like to see him win? Yes, but I don't know, storyline-wise, if you get the satisfaction from it that you get unless, like, he's really been put through the fucking ringer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then maybe that's how you finally lose Jungle Boy. They teased it, you know, a while back where it's like, you're not, you're not wrestling Jungle Boy, you're wrestling Jack Perry. And they've leaned into the Jack Perry stuff a little more, yeah. so maybe they beat the living shit out of him another time or two. And then, yeah. then he gets Luchasaurus next, and then when Cage is healthy, he beats the shit out of Cage. And then that's the ultimate, that's how you wrap that story up, right? Yeah, could be. Yeah. So I think we're both both Luchasaurus there. So next up we have for the TNT Championship, Triple Threat, Samoa Joe, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Wardlow. It's got to be Wardlow, right? I mean, I feel like you need to you need to keep it on him and make him indestructible for a little while longer. Yeah, cuz they've done nothing with him. Right. Exactly. Nothing. Um, I feel like you got You got to keep him. You got to keep him indestructible at least a little while longer. Maybe till the next pay per view. Then you could put it on. I, Powerhouse Hobbs just looks so fucking good right now. He he doesn't have. I don't know, man. He doesn't have the charisma that Wardlow has. I don't think. Um. But damn, that's gonna be a banger. It could. Yeah, I mean, it could be these two guys. These three men could really get in there and beat the hell out of each other. Uh, do they also do a thing where they put it on Samoa Joe? And Samoa Joe is double champ. Yeah. Because the TNT Championship is basically the same tier as the Ring of Honor Television Championship. Uh, and so, you know, having Samoa Joe come out with two bets, that could be cool. I just think it's going to be Wardlow. I think they have too much stock yeah. invested in him to kind of change course now. Um, yeah. And he really doesn't have... There's no signature win that he's had as champion. Well, there hasn't. Usually you can see a title change coming. Yeah. And I don't feel like there's been any signifier. But this could be, you know, it could be the, the swerve we get where maybe Powerhouse or Samoa Joe gets the win. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Uh, up next, we have Jade Cargill, TBS champion, versus uh, the <laughs> self proclaimed TBS champion in Nyla Rose. Well, I would love to see the qu air quote. TBS champion Nyla Rose take it just for just to get it off of Jade I don't think they do it this match should be three and a half minutes long yeah and it should be Jade squashing Nyla Rose yeah. as much as we both like Nyla Rose and think that she's done good work uh, good comedy heel work here it should be Jade yeah. just getting yeah. her and, and, and that's it I, the question is where do you go with Jade Cargill from here once that happens I don't know who you run up <laughs> against her. I mean, I got, nothing, I got nothing. I don't... 
because Statlander has an ACL, right? Well, because this was probably yeah, she, supposed we to won't be say Chris Statlander until Stat- next year. This was probably supposed to be Chris Statlander yeah. being the one that dethrones Jade because at some point she has to lose. Yeah, she can't be. She can't go her whole un- career undefeated. That's where they were heading. Clearly, I f- I felt, but yeah. So yeah, I think Jade Cargill, uh, smart choice there for both of us. Next up, we have for the trios championship, Death Triangle versus the returning Elite. I mean, they'll put it on the Elite. The only reason they don't have it right now is because they got stripped because they got it messy backstage. True. I'm gonna go with Death Triangle though, just because I think that that's too putting it back on the Elite is it's too. Um, too obvious and i like even if they do something where like death triangle wins at full gear and and the elite win at winter is coming or whatever it's just like are we really just gonna bypass death triangle and just act like they didn't exist and and put it back on the elite i mean you might be right i don't know i just feel like it's tony khan he's gonna be like i'm gonna put it on yeah, but then, like, okay, yeah, you put it on the Elite, but then you just have to, you got to run the match back again <laughs> at yeah, some point. True. Uh, true. I'll, yeah, I'll I'll go Death Triangle because I just think the Elite is coming back is too obvious. Yeah, unless it's maybe like, hey, y'all can come back, but you ain't getting these titles immediately. There's, unless. There was sort of stipulation with them being like, yeah, we think y'all are mostly in the clear, but we're not putting these titles back on you. So I'll have a caveat to my prediction. If nothing happens post match, I'm gonna go with Death Triangle. If they have a thing where House of Black's gonna return, they'll be facing the Elite, and the Elite will win this match. Okay. And the Elite will be standing in the middle of the ring, having their moment, triumphant return. The lights will go black, the music will hit, and now comes House of Black mm. to challenge the Elite. And that'll okay. be that'll be what you do for the next two months, is run those two factions up against each other. Um, so I'd be, I'd be for it. Yeah, because like we said, if it wasn't for Malachi needing a mental health break, they would be the it'd be House of Black versus the Elite because House of Black would be trios champions. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So those will be. I got a little two way prediction right there. So next up, we have Jericho versus Claudio versus Danielson versus Guevara for the Ring of Honor World Championship. It has to be Jericho. Yeah. I don't know. So it's inter- it's really interesting what you do with the rest of these guys. Because Brian Danielson, you really have... Like, the crowd really wants to get behind him. But they just don't, for whatever reason, AEW, either it be Tony Khan or it be Brian Danielson, they just do not want to put Danielson in that position. I'm not really sure why. But... Hey, I mean, do you think, okay, we we talked about the reason they probably let Jericho run with it for so long is that they want to have, like, somebody that can carry the show when they sign the TV deal, right? Right. So we feel like that's going to get announced real soon. I mean, hell, maybe they, because they're just, they're just ring of honor every fucking week, right? So, yeah. um, do you think Danielson has the the star power to carry it? Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm talking about Danielson has the power to be the biggest star in the company. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe maybe they do put it on Danielson. I mean, I I don't feel like that's what's going to happen, but it just feels like it's going to be Jericho after he got pinned the other night. They're going to be like, oh, we're going to put it on Jericho. And these two groups have now been feuding for six fucking months yeah cause the blood and guts Claudio debuted in what February somewhere that's, like there something like that Yeah, where they had the blood and guts and this was the whole thing yeah. about it yeah 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 so yeah this has been a long feud at some point we have to put an end to it um yeah I don't know cause coming out of this what do you do with Guevara what do you do with Danielson what do you do with Claudio it, they hit, you can ride Guevara off for a while. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they've teased a potential Blackpool Combat Club breakup with Danielson and Yuta and Claudio being caught in the middle. You know, do we see the Blackpool Combat Club dissolve Saturday at full gear? I mean, it's possible. Um, what do you do with Regal after that? Just put him on commentary mostly? or Unless you want to... Well, if you were going to keep MJF as a heel... 
then the, then the thing to do is to have William Regal align with MJF and in the middle of the match realize he did bet on the wrong horse and the guy to get behind is MJF. Oh, damn. But I don't think you do that because MJF is too much of a baby face. MJF got the go home. He got to send the crowd home happy Wednesday. You know, like after the show ends and they have somebody come back out and do a promo. That was MJF did that Wednesday. So, like, he's the... He's going to be the new guy of the company. So I don't know if you want to. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's made all these allusions to not using, not cheating or doing anything this yeah. weekend. So we'll see if that really plays out. Yeah. So I I, I think you could do you do Jericho here, and uh, maybe we see a Danielson Claudio feud how going long, forward. How long has Danielson been back? Oh, I don't know. A couple months now. At this point, when did he? Well, sh- shout out to that man and. Whatever is in his body and his hair growth. Because remember how short his hair was when he came back? He had that little shitty ponytail up, yeah. up at the top. Like the sides of his head were shaved. He had that little shitty ponytail, right? Yeah. That fucking shit is down past his chin now. That's money. That's how? what money will do. When you're rich, you can do things like that. That's fucking amazing, man. When I used to try to grow my hair out, it took me three fucking years. Well, you're not a millionaire. That's if you were a millionaire and could go to like the all these specialists and whatever, and they could give you supplements or whatever, it'd be a different story. It's like how uh, when you look at Tom Brady's rookie photo, you're like, oh man, that's an ugly ass dude. When you look at Tom <laughs> Brady now, you're like, he's handsome. It's like it wasn't the fact that he was ugly; he was just poor. <laughs> it was the problem. <laughs> there are really hardly any r- ugly rich people for that reason. They can just buy stuff. Uh, so next up, we have Tony Storm versus Jamie Hader for the AEW Women's Championship. My heart wants to say Jamie Hayter so bad. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I th- I, my prediction will be Tony Storm. Yeah. Although, with the caveat being, do we see Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter fully go their separate ways come Saturday? Remember, they teased it a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And then they realigned for whatever stupid reason. Still don't know why they did that, but whatever. They just automatically became friends again. Maybe just so they could make a bigger deal out of a split at the pay-per-view. So if they're going to do the split, the split has to happen with Jamie Hayter holding the AEW title. Otherwise, there's no storyline sense it makes for Britt Baker to then say, oh, Jamie is dead weight, or I don't, you know, I'm going to turn on or whatever. Yeah. So, Tony Storm, but... If Jamie Hayter wins, then my prediction is that Britt Baker stabs her in the back, and we do that for going forward. Yeah. Tool, I guess Thunder Rosa comes back. Honestly, at this point, when Thunder Rosa comes back, I would just have Jamie Hayter squash Thunder Rosa <laughs> yeah. to unify the belts and try to figure out something else to do with Thunder. Yeah. Um. Uh, so next up, we have the Acclaim versus Swerve in Our Glory for the third time in their rivalry. Both of them are tied at one a piece now at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I think, think we both think it's the acclaimed. It acclaimed yeah. yeah. But I guess a, a better prediction is, do we think this match will be better than their second match? I don't know, man. Their first match was something special. Yeah. Grand Slam. I mean, that's an all-timer for AEW tag team match. The second match was good, but a little bit of a letdown just based off the what the first one was. Yeah. Um, I think if you go into this one with a clean slate and be like, all right, let's pretend like we hadn't seen these dudes wrestle. Yeah. I think they'll put on a banger. Because yeah. I think you're right. I think this is where we see the end of Swerve in Our Glory. It has to be. I don't see how it goes forward. Because like we said, we've already seen FTR and the Acclaimed uh, be in the same ring with each other. It feels like that's what we're going to do next. I, I don't for, I don't know why you would keep having Swerve in Our Glory be a thing. Yeah after this uh but i guess better yet where would where i guess swerve and keith would then feud with each other i mean yeah that'd be good um you let them have a have a rivalry um so yeah that could be cool particularly if swerve becomes a homicidal maniac again (laughs) and uh (laughs) if he took billy Gunn's hands what does he try to take off of keith lee you try to like cut a toe off or something just for men out of his beard (laughs) shave his beard off uh, and then, yeah, the main event, uh, what we've been waiting for, John Moxley versus MJF for the AEW World Championship. Yeah, it's it's MJF. I would be shocked if it's not MJF. 
Like, do they do they beat beat him? Do they beat Moxley so bad that he's just written off for a while, or is it just kind of like known? They're like, hey, I'm, I'm. So here's it. So, all right, if we're gonna have MJF stay a babyface, which I think is the right call, because you're gonna need. I think Meltzer has talked about this before, and there's a lot of people have talked about this. If if pro wrestling across both AEW and and AEW are missing one thing, it's a super over babyface. If you think back to the 80s, you had Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage, huge baby faces. You think about the early 90s in WWE, you had Bret Hart. Uh, in WCW, you had a young Sting. You had the Road Warriors, guys like that. The late 90s, obviously, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. And then it kind of goes to John Cena, and we've kind of been in this place with wrestling here for probably about the last 20 years, where it's just like... Yeah, John Cena was over, but half the crowd was also booing him in a way that in the 80s, nobody was booing Hulk Hogan. Nobody was booing Stone Cold Steve Austin. So, like, wrestling needs a baby face that the entire crowd can get behind. And I think you have two potentials. In WWE, it is obviously Sami Zayn, which is why we both think he should challenge Roman for the title at WrestleMania. And in AEW, if there's one guy that can do that, it's MJF. And so... If you if you come out of this and have MJF use the dynamite diamond ring and he screws over John Moxley, I think that's such a missed opportunity and a a potentially not fatal miscalculation, but it, it's a it's a bad play. It's a blunder for sure. He even referenced the ring last night, so like maybe there's a thing where he goes to put the ring on and is like, nah, fuck it, I'm gonna take it off and do this the right way, sort of deal, right? Yeah. And I think at the end of this match, he has to beat, if he's going to stay babyface, which I think is the right call, he has to beat John Moxley clean. John Moxley then has to stand up, and these two guys have to shake hands in the middle of the ring. And you have a real torch, passing of, passing of the torch moment where John Moxley has been at the top of the top for this whole time, and now we're giving the keys over to MJF to see what he can do. Then you can have the firm come out and beat down MJF and beat down... John Moxley, and that's how you can write John Moxley off of television while he goes. Against yeah, the there vacation. you go, there you go. So here's the deal. I know because this thing won't be over till damn near eleven, eleven thirty <laughs> Saturday night, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna be about four glasses of bourbon deep by the time this goes off. Yeah. I'm either gonna be elated and through the roof, or I'm gonna be real pissed off at the way they handle this. I don't think there's any middle ground. This seems like a... We've said this before and they've come through, but it it really feels like that way now. They can't miss this. This pay-per-view can't be a miss because there's too much momentum that WWE has going for it with the bloodline and Sami Zayn and and WWE's gearing up to their road to WrestleMania. AEW has been lackluster, to say the least, these past month and a half. They really need a moment where if this was a TV show, this is the big season finale, and then they go off the air for eight months. Unfortunately, though, it's pro wrestling, and they have to put a show out the next week. Yeah. Because that really feels like AEW just needs a reset. It feels like everybody's just tired, and they just really need to go on vacation for six months. Yeah, you're right. This but, is a good way to to be like, hey, this is the this is the official ending of the punk brawl out we're not dealing with this shit anymore right mjf is our champion yeah and he's going to carry us into the future uh and also too you got to think about this i don't know when is that zach efron movie going to come out the von eric yeah maybe sometime next year you know you want to have mjf go on that press junket tour holding the AEW championship because yeah. it gives you more visibility that way. I'm thinking it'll probably be 2024 because they're just now shooting it. They've only been shooting a couple. Yeah, weeks. so it could could be could be. I mean, it's not going to take that long to edit that either. Now there's a lot of t- um, special effects, so it could be late. It could be one of those late late year movies next year. I, yeah, I think if we the other scenario is MJF cheats and William Regal goes in his corner and they screw over John Moxley. If that's the case. It has to be Ricky starts. It faces him next. Then, then Ricky has to become the guy that's the, the baby face that everybody gets behind, right? Yeah. 
Because we don't even know. I don't even know if the uh, AEW number one contendership. You know, it's Ethan Page is already in the finals, but we've yet to see who he's going to face. We both think it's going to be Ricky Starks. Um, yeah, because he has to beat either he has to beat Lance Archer or Brian Cage, oh, or and or Brian Cage. He's got to beat both of them to be there at the final. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, I'd be shocked if it's not MJF. Um, if you're if you're hell bent and if MJF is hell bent on staying a heel. Okay, but you got to the 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 difficulty goes up by 10 if you try to keep MJF as a heel. Uh, whereas if you make MJF a babyface, it is a natural thing that the audience is already wanting to do. Yeah. They cheered him last night when he came out. So, let me ask you this. He he was talking about how important it was and how crowning achievement of his career or whatever would be winning the AEW championship and how prestigious it is. And he was like really hyping up AEW and the championship, right? Yeah. Then why does he come out after the show and talk about love in WWE? Because I think it's in that tweener. You know, he's in there with Tony Khan and he's in that tweener kind of role. Um, so it would... If, you know, he's talked about bidding war of 2024, so just be, it would be odd for him now just to drop all that stuff. Because I think what you do is you make him a babyface now, you have him keep the title, and then the closer we get to 2024, you slowly turn him back, and by then, you've built up somebody else, be it a Ricky Starks or an Eddie Kingston, or there's somebody else that the fans are behind that you could easily just run them up against MJF yeah. and have the crowd really go split you know mjf's a bad guy eddie kingston's a good guy or yeah. ricky starks or whoever gotcha um so, but you know you have that's coming you got a whole year to do that true, right true we we got to put a, a show out next week so what's the best way that we could do that show i think it's with mjf holding the holding the title so this is the the hangman page question i wanted to ask you um how I'm curious about how concussions are dealt with in wrestling versus how they're dealt with in football. Because we know there's been a spotlight on football concussions the last few years and CTE and everything that's come out about Junior Seau and, and all these people from the past. But, you know, Adam Cole's been out for a long, long time with a concussion. I know there was some probably some other issues there. He had had a history with concussions, though, right? Yeah. Um and we know the one with Hangman was pretty rough, but like, you know, we, the one with Tua was super rough, and he was back out on the field in three, two, three weeks. Yeah. So, what's the deal with like wrestling concussions and how long they keep them out versus? I think the biggest difference. It, there's probably not anything medically that's all that different. The biggest difference is. In sports, you're trying to win a game the next week, and you know people have you're trying to win a championship. There's records and stuff like that stakes on the line. In wrestling, you can just make this stuff up, right? So, like, even if a hangman was cleared to wrestle the next week, do you have anything for him to do? And if yeah, not, let it's him take better, time and really, really if, heal. Yeah, and if it's not, then it's better you just kind of sit at home. So then we can have the big moment when you come back, right? If you're only gone for a week and then you come back and you wrestle, hell, I don't know, you wrestle the one of the ass boys. Yeah. <laughs> you go, okay, well, that's a missed. Why'd, why'd I come back? Yeah, it's a missed opportunity there. Yeah, okay. Um, that makes sense. So they're probably, And also you don't get the medical attention in AEW that you probably get from the billionaire owners in the NFL. Yeah. There's probably a lot of that, too. Like, he's probably cleared to wrestle now. I mean, like you said, with Adam Cole, there were other stuff. Uh, he had a history of concussion. There were other lingering issues, injuries that he had. Uh, so you you probably be a little bit more cautious with him. Um, we haven't heard anything from Hangman, but I would suspect he's probably okay to wrestle. He's got a kid, too, like, that was just yeah, born this year. So just he's a, probably just home chilling. You just don't have anything for him to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Miro. Yeah. Who's been gone from television for I don't even know how long at this point. Yeah. What, what are uh, we doing? And I don't even know if there were I issues there. Uh, he's just off television. I think the biggest takeaway 
from this, and we'll wrap it up with this. AEW has a lot of pieces where you go, man, if they could just figure out the right way to use Eddie Kingston, if they could just figure out the right way to use Miro, if they could just figure out the right way to use House of Black, this wrestling program would be fantastic on a week-to-week basis to the point where I do think you could make new wrestling fans. This product could be so hot where people could be like, Hey, you! Ha- I know you don't like wrestling, but like this is different. Like, come watch this. Like, look at these Twitter clips. And I think underlying that's the biggest frustration with this company, is that like all the puzzle pieces are right there, but you're just trying to jam all this shit together. It, you're constantly like square peg, round hole in this thing, where you're like, man, if you could just figure out a way to make this make this puzzle work, there's something really, really fantastic here. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is our biggest frustration, and that's why we go into this. Because, like, this card, for as good as hopefully we think it is, there's no Orange Cassidy on this card. There's no FTR on this card. There's no Miro on this card. We could see a potentially returning House of Black. But, like, I don't know. It feels, and it's still going to be a four-hour show. And it still will be a four-hour show. It feels like we are, uh, I don't know. We we have a, we got we got a Lamborghini and we refuse to go over 35 miles an hour in that thing. <laughs> and you're like, man, if you just open it up, <laughs> it, this would be, you'd be humming down the road. So, what, what was the thing I texted you last night? It was a it was a line from Samoa Joe when he was talking about flapping your gums. Oh, come catch one? Come catch one. Yeah. Yeah. And even that, like, you know, the way they've used Samoa Joe, there's a better way to use him than what you have. So, um... Yeah, uh, hopefully full gear, you put the title on MJF, you kind of reset this thing, and I don't know. I still, I think there needs to be more creative forces with more say-so in the storytelling of the product than just Tony Khan. Because I don't know if one man can do all of this in modern-day wrestling with as much programming as what's out there and how visible everything is. You know, Vince McMahon in the 80s could do that. Even he had a booking crew, but like... The fucking 80s, the show wasn't even live. You know, it was taped, and it was once a Saturday for an hour. Like, this is two hours of programming and pay-per-views. And, yeah, and this doesn't count Friday Night Rampage. Yeah, like... Which it, looks to be a banger this week. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a lot. And so I think you need more forces there. So, I don't know. I want this... I want AEW to be good so yeah. bad. Well, there's not any good football games on Saturday night either, I don't think. Yeah. So, um, you know, there might be a lot of people that are like, fucking, I'm... What, am I, what else am I doing? Could be. Could be. Um, I also want to apologize for lack of a Twitter prompt this week because we're recording early and it didn't even occur to me. Probably forgot about it. Uh, yesterday that we should have put one out yesterday. We knew we were recording early today. Uh, it's my son's birthday, so I'm leaving work uh, early this afternoon. We usually record late Thursday afternoon. Uh, so no, no, no Twitter prompt this week. I apologize. Uh Chase Gillen, you're you're not Chase Gillen, Blue Gillen, you're um you're forgiven. He apologized on Twitter <laughs> for not, not So did Chase. Chase, so did Chase. Chase. Yeah, shout out both of you guys. Y'all are y'all are forgiven. We look our fan but like, we have a small listenership. It's only I don't what is it? I don't know, a couple dozen people at this point. Like we're an early show. So we really do appreciate, even though we make jokes, we appreciate the hell out of everybody that listens and yeah, interacts sure. with us. And, uh, you know, we're trying to grow this thing uh, as much as we can. And, and hopefully, we, you know, at, at least we, at least we're trying to give you different wrestling analysis than maybe what a lot of podcasts are doing out there. So hopefully we're fulfilling on that. Yeah. And, and there, there's another example of not being fully into it. I mean, I'm not, I haven't had coffee patches sucked down a cup of coffee over there. I said dark triangle. I combined two of our <laughs> listeners into one listener. Y'all. I'm I'm trying to be up right now, but I'm your boy is tired. Your boy, he does a John Moxley. Uh, yeah, your boy. Shit, I, I could use a vacation too, and I'm taking two weeks of vacation at Christmas, so I, I think I got that on the brain. I'm just like I got the 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 finish line is in sight, and I can see it, and uh, yeah. So I just fucked up like Moxley fucked up. That's what I'm gonna roll with. Um, but we we really do appreciate everybody, and if y'all could, we'd really appreciate y'all sharing us with your friends. Um, Share us on Twitter and Instagram at Alabama Slam Pod. Don't know how much longer Twitter's going to be viable. That looks like it's fucking falling apart even more and more on a daily basis. 
Um, there's just a fucking meltdown over there right now. It looks <laughs> like, I don't know if we should even fucking sign up for a, should we do a Facebook page for the podcast? Y'all let us know. Is it, could it be more interactive over there? Is it, is it easy, more easily shareable over there? I, I don't fucking know. We're terrible at promotion. So y'all help us out. Um, and follow the Alabama take, uh, that we got a bunch of podcasts on our little network over there, Alabama take on, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And, um, yeah, we got a bunch of podcasts happening. Um, I usually list them all off. Y'all know what they are. We really appreciate y'all following those too. And, uh, holler at us with your predictions on what you think is happening. I'll probably be drunk tweeting during the the show (laughs) Saturday night. Um, Patrick usually tries to get on Twitter, but yeah, don't know if you'll be able to get on during the show. I think you I should be, be able to go show. get on during the show. Yeah, yeah. So and maybe maybe me and Patrick um, drunk tweeting Saturday night. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's usually fun. To, I don't keep up a lot with Twitter during the, sh- the week, um, but I try to during the pay per views, and it, it's it's usually fun to watch everybody kind of kind of shouting about what's going on. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's usually, I feel like it's a good time to pick up followers. I'm terrible. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do engagement or any of that. Y'all help us out, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we really appreciate y'all. Um, let us know what you think about, about what's, what's going to happen or holler at us after the show with your post show thoughts too, man. And, and, uh, maybe we'll read some of that on the podcast next week. Um, probably record early next week, maybe because next thursday is uh thanksgiving, thanksgiving. oh shit yeah so, yeah we'll probably rec- yeah we'll yeah keep on your feet we'll announce on our twitter we might do yeah. an early like uh just kind of a post aw maybe we record on like a monday or tuesday yeah. just post full gear yeah we don't know what we're doing half the time <laughs> y'all we're just trying to put on a good show we're terrible at, sell- at promotion so uh yeah give us a shout and let us know what you think man we, uh, we appreciate y'all later guys